Hello everyone, Genesis Rider here with another free-for-all gameplay video today. Another tips and tricks video to add to the free-for-all playlist here. Now, at the, at the start of this gameplay, I would like to say yes, we are playing on the map Skyline. Yes, it is Pro Rumble, which means you have to choose from a select amount of loadouts. You can't load out with your own stuff. And every single person in this game, besides the one guy who quit, which I'm not counting, has more than 35,000 kills and is more than 5,000 kills positive, meaning they have 5,000 more kills than deaths. What this means is that the other players in the game are definitely experienced players, not necessarily skilled, but definitely experienced. And um, Gamers for Christ actually beat me once or twice in previous lobbies um, in these games. And I just wanted to go over this gameplay because I felt like it was very, very well played on my part. This map, I mean, is really, really pretty. And um, while many of you out there may not actually have this map, um, you may know this map from the Halo 4 Global Championship and the final 1v1s where Ace won $200,000 on this very map. So let's get straight into the gameplay. Now it is 25 kills to win. Starting off the spawn, I see a guy just spawned to my right, and I'm going to try to pick him up. Unfortunately, he ends up escaping top middle. Now right here, um, I do just wait. Just notice how I wait, waited and didn't charge there. I was able to get that kill. That guy gets a really good angle jumping up. Notice how I was trying to look up, and I was really, really, you know, scatterbrained with my aim or reticle. That guy gets cleaned up again. Ironically, the red guy tries the same strategy, and that doesn't end up working. Now, all this gameplay is 100% um, okay on my part. Um, I do make some really good uses here. Now, here, here's an interesting um, thing to note. If you listen very closely, that kill that just happened, I know that this guy has a sticky deck. Okay, this is Gamers for Christ. And I know that he's going to try to fire one at this ledge, but if he misses, it will go underneath the ledge and hit this light. What that means is that it will not hit me while I'm on top, and I want you to notice how when he fires the sticky death right there, and I back up, it explodes and he does absolutely no damage to me. Here's a really good play on my part, going out the lift, um, just trying to stay alive, turn around and meleeing the guy coming up after me, just trying to get him as weak as possible or get a kill. Um, I would also like to say that I only get four assists in this game. I have some very good shots that was pretty warmed up. There's Gamer for Christ again. I get an insane angle on him right there. Sorry for pausing the film for half a second. I am one kill above um, the next guy following me. So I noticed these two guys fighting. And I want you to notice how I approach this entire situation. After getting this kill, I knew that by holding down this side of the map, typically someone's not going to spawn necessarily right there. But I know other players are going to be on this side because they can spawn on that side. So I'm going to push over there and I immediately see, and I, I see two guys on my radar. This guy um, right below me likely just spawned um, in this general area and is going to run up. So both of them are going to engage. What that means is one of them is going to be weak. Um, not from my grenade, but from fighting each other. And that is exactly what ends up happening. If you're really lucky, you can run around the corner and get a double kill. You're accurate and lethal with your shot. Continuing to try again, putting some really nice four-shot VR shots straight into me. I think that was a four-shot there. Of course, tied six to six. Again, I see the same sort of situation. But I notice that this guy has already cleaned up. When I see that red dot go off my radar, I notice that this guy's already cleaned up his kill, so I'm not going to pursue him because he's now aware of my position. I'm going to try to hang off the radar here and just really try to uh, wait for someone else to engage someone else. Notice again how he engaged someone else, and now I'm able to drop down and get yet another kill as um, these, those two enemy players were weak from fighting each other. Now this is an unavoidable situation. I live the top middle trying to escape. Actually, a lot of people are top mid, so when I respawn here, I'm going to try to um, look top mid because a lot of people were there. Now once again, I've noticed that someone has spawned behind me here, but I get a little too focused. Um, with uh, long range shooting, you can't see your radar when you are zoomed, and this guy sneaks up behind me and kills me. One of my few mistakes during this game, you really have to be watching your radar in this game. Even right now, 
Um, if I pushed up up here and killed the guy who was in front of me, p enemy players could spawn behind me. So it's very crucial that you watch your radar on this map, and really in any free-for-all game, uh, especially in Haven. Good play by that guy, but he didn't have a whole lot of shield to challenge there. I would have dropped if I was in the tower. I don't think Cameron's for Christ notices that I'm off to the left right there. This is a really good um, escape route by me, just running away, trying to frustrate the enemy players. On a lot of free throw games, you won't be able to do that. And notice how I'm hanging off the radar here, like how I'm crouching, okay? A lot of players in free throw just won't do that. And there are some maps, um, such as Haven, where it's not nearly as necessary. Um, it, it really boils down to the fact that I know other players are going to engage and they're going to give me the kill. Again, right here, that guy was already weak. I got a good double kill, my, one of my only two double kills in this game. This guy put some excellent shots into me. Really good straight to maneuver there. Only get four assists in the game. I think I've already said that. That's really good. Um, I do go 2.0 in this game with only four assists. I would have liked to have gotten more kills with the railgun, but actually it made for a very interesting game because I only got three power weapon kills in this game. I wasn't hogging power weapons the entire game or, you know, trying to, you know, the gameplay is much more interesting as a result. Now here I do have a wild railgun shot on this guy. Typically you want to charge the railgun while you're behind cover, jump out, and shoot it. Um, now this guy charges me, which is... I don't know why, what is going through this player's head right now. I think he believes I'm weak, which I am. When an enemy player has a railgun, um, what you wanted, what he needed to have done here is he needed to have faked, run like that, and then immediately crouch jump on top of this pillar. That's what you want to do when players have railguns or sticky debts or something of that nature. Because let's say I had a sticky debt. If I had a sticky debt and I saw the red dot moving towards my location, I'm not going to fire it right here, okay? I'm going to fire it right here on the floor, obviously. So if he jumped on top of this, he would have negated most of the damage. And look how my shields are so low. So he would have been able to easily kill me. But he comes the route that I know he's going to come. He doesn't try to change it up at all. So I get the kill. And it's puzzling to me why he did that. Because he knows I have the railgun. I've already tired shot at him. Very nice long range shot here. Um, on the player who was second to me, I would like to point that out. I did kill the player who was contesting me for the lead there. This guy picked up the scatter shot. Ended up getting one scat scatter shot kill later on the game. Um, right here, yeah, here we go. This player doesn't expect me to. And I should have jumped there to try to engage Gamer for Christ again, but I did not. So respawning, I'm one kill ahead of some players um, going to throw some nades. I see the assist pop up, so I'm going to run the completely opposite direction because I'm weak. Try to curve around here and kill a player going up. The game is for Christ, but I um, back down and I get the assist. This is the a non optimal thing you want to be in. Um, in fact, my escape here is very, very lucky, and it's one of the it's just one of the really good plays I make during this game. If you can make an escape like this legitimately, that's great, okay? But typically in free-for-all, you can see the score is tied right now. You want to be getting kills, so respawning isn't necessarily a bad thing because respawning can put you in a better spot than where you were. Right now, I'm in a terrible location, bottom middle. So you can see I let another player engage the player who is following me. And I ended up being very well there. Again, another player ends up engaging the guy I'm shooting. Right here, I didn't get this kill all by myself. You can see another player helped me out here, and that red guy was not expecting to die that quickly. I'm um, guaranteed for try to come in and try to get that kill. That's really what you want to be doing, watching the radar and manipulating the enemies to your advantage, basically, if you can possibly manage. After reviewing this film quite a bit, I saw a very interesting thing that is about to occur right here. While my commentary continues, I um, would you like you to watch very closely what I do in the situation as I drop to the bottom floor of the map and an enemy player starts shooting from behind and chasing me on my radar. This happens to be the red player who, as you can see in the bottom right corner of the screen, is contesting me for the lead. And I do an excellent job of evading him and trying to stay alive, which I do, and I actually end up killing him. This likely uh, partly won me the game. 
um, the, what I'm about to do right here. So I just wanted to jump in and say that before I continue with the rest of the commentary. And what's nice about this game is I know these players are going to engage each other. They're not going to run around randomly. Um, in other words, um, experienced players are a little bit more easy to predict than players who have no experience with the game whatsoever. This is very, very true. You get some excellent shots on EM Raditz. And very good job trying to stay alive there, bottom mid. I see this guy here, I'm really not sure what he's doing. Red guy ends up cleaning me up, and it is very puzzling to me why he would shoot my body, but I mean, moving on, I am ahead. I guess, again, I guess he's trying to get into my head because he is the second player on the scoreboard. I would imagine that's the reason why he's doing that. Um, when that happens, don't let that, especially if you get teabag, don't let that discourage you. Um, they're just trying to get into your head, specifically when you're in the lead or contesting for the lead. Right here, I notice a guy down here, so I'm going to try to... I can't notice two players engaging each other, so I'm going to uh, pick up a kill on the for Christ here. I'm going to sort of back down, jump up top middle again, I get picked up by the red player. He's now behind me. I'm not sure why this guy is sitting right there. I guess he's waiting for me to spawn. Again, one of the mistakes on my part is just being very bad at close range counter. If you've watched any of my videos, you've seen um, just how bad it can be. But this actually wasn't that bad of a situation because I was able to come off my spawn and get two people who were very weak and able to come down. Uh, just notice what I'm doing here. I, this is really crucial for the game ends here. This guy's a all one shot top middle. That guy, if he wants to stay alive, he is not going to stay there. He's going to move. Um, this is actually probably a bad play on his part. He should try to um, kill me or attack me because he, he, I mean, I very well may be weak um, chasing him. But he, he gets away here. And now, notice what I'm doing. I see myself getting shot. Okay, right here, I see myself getting shot from behind. So I know that this player is going to, you know, really, really trying to kill me here. But I know that these other two dots are also going to be on his radar. And if I escape top middle, he's not, he doesn't have a really good angle unless he has, like, some perfect nades to try and kill me here. So he's going to divert his attention to someone else. So I up picking up the kill on that guy. You can now notice that um, this guy's attention has been completely diverted to another player. And that's really what you want to do, is you want to disappear here off the radar long enough to where um, it really maybe allows them to go after another player and not you, basically. Um, now, I have watched a lot of pro gameplay on this map. Um, and I will go over the stats um, of the game right now. As you can see right here, I did get 25 kills, 4 assists, 12 deaths. Four assists is very good. As you can see, it was the lowest amount of assists compared to anyone in the game. That's optimally what you should have around because you want to only be engaging when you actually think you're going to be getting the kill, and that should lead to you not getting an assist. Um, notice how I did have only 12 deaths, definitely a 2.0 KD or a little bit higher than that. And notice how the three players below me each had 18 deaths, and that's six more deaths than I had. Um, this is for a variety of reasons, but probably because they weren't staying off the radar um, during those pivotal moments right after you get a kill like I was doing in that game. Um, you notice how Gamers for Christ really did not know how to play that map. Uh, 14 kills, 14 deaths. Um, this just goes to show, because he was definitely a top two or three player. I played with him at least five to six games, free for all, and he beat me one or two times. Um, it just goes to show that um, you need to watch gameplay on the maps to be, I mean, it can really improve your game. I sincerely have not played that many games on Skyline, and yet I did pretty well. So guys, I hope you enjoyed this gameplay, me slowing it down and commentating on a few things. Um, if you would like the video, that would help me out a lot. Subscribe for more future Halo slash Destiny content, and I'll see you on the next capture or whatever I end up recording. Peace, guys.